Okay, H5. The pendulum and nail. Oh, this is a tricky problem from many, many years ago. Uh, what happens here is you have the same kind of a pendulum arrangement with length L and you're going to release the ball. And here, when it gets down to the bottom though, there's going to be a nail here. We're going to have a nail. And then this is going to arc around, like it's going to wrap around this nail. So the distance the nail is from the top is D. And your problem here is to find that distance. So when the ball gets to the top, this part of the pendulum rope just goes slack. All right. In other words, you're going to find that there is no tension in the rope. So that's another way of looking at it, that there's tension in the rope. And at this point here, the tension that's attached to the, the, the rope that's attached to the ball, that's going to be equal to zero. In other words, to state the problem is that what is the distance D? So the ball will reach the top of this semicircle. In fact, if you think of the D so that it's not set like that, what will happen is it won't get to the top. It'll just kind of fall, fall down before it gets there. So you want it to get to the top, but just barely get to the top. So that's another way of phrasing the question. So in doing this problem, it's helpful here for me. Let's see, I like to have a little radius here of this circle. And then I'm looking at this distance here, which is two times the radius. Because I know my initial height for my conservation of energy is going to be L. And then that's going to be point position one. And then for position two, is going to be this position here. This is going to be position two. And that's going to be a height of two R. But you can see that D plus R is L. So D plus R is L. So that means R is L minus D. And then two R is two times L minus D. So now I'm ready to do the energy equation, I would have here the kinetic energy at point one plus the potential at one is the kinetic at two plus the potential at two. So at one, I'm releasing from rest. So that's zero. This is going to be MGL. That's the height. And then at point two, I don't know what I don't know what that is, so I'm going to put down one half mv squared, like I don't know what it is. And then for the potential energy, that's going to be mg times the height, which is the two l minus d. So that's the setup. But we immediately see we have a difficulty because. Here I got that velocity that's messing me up. I gotta get rid of that velocity. And the way to do that is to do the force diagram at point two. So at point two, if we do the force diagram, we have pointing down tension plus mg, and that's gonna equal mv squared over r. That's a circular, you know, acceleration, centripetal acceleration. We want this tension to be zero, just have enough there, just makes it, just barely makes it. So this gives me a, the second equation I need. Now, what I would like to do is make, make this equation look like one half mv squared. So I can make that work, make this be a one half mv squared if I bring the R on the right-hand side and divide by two. So one half MGR.
So what I did here is the first step is I multiplied both sides by R to get this. And then to get the one half MV squared, I just divided the MGR by two. Because see, that can go in here. And now I, ha I, got, rid of, I got rid of it, so I'm, I'm ready to go. So here, if I look at this, I have MGL on the left-hand side equals one half MGR plus two MG L minus D. Now the MGs go away. So that gives me L is one half R plus two L minus two D. We're solving for a D, that was the question. In fact, we could put down there, question mark. Then what I recognize is that the R is L minus D. So this is one half L minus D. So I'm all set to finish this problem now, that the length here is L over two minus D over two plus two L minus two D. And here I find, you know, now I recognize that I could be doing this a lot faster because if you go up here where this R is, this R is L minus D. And I have L minus D here, so that this makes a nice simplification because I have then one half L minus D, MG is floating around, plus two MG, L minus D. Now this is a lot better because see, now I got that L minus D. I don't have to do all this stuff that looks ugly. So this means when I divide out the MGs, I get L and I have here two and a half L minus D. Well, that's five halves. So, uh, this is much simpler algebra. And then you get here two L equals 5L, well, actually, probably better here just to say two-fifths of L is L minus D, then bring the D over and subtract the two-fifths and get this probably the fastest way. So when I do problems, it's, it's sometimes I find a shortcut and then like switch gears. That's why I say do your work on scrap paper first. Some of you write this up. You write it up the better way, nice and neat. Your teacher thinks you're a genius. All right, so that's the answer, uh, or the the answer you know can be expressed as a decimal point six, you know L. Now let's have another question here. Let's say find the formula, simple formula for the velocity at that point at the top there. So that means all these equations I have are correct. I just need to find equation that is simple that has the velocity. I think this equation here is an easy one. And here the, the masses cancel and the R is L minus D. So G times L minus D like this is equal to V squared. I mean, that's, that's very simple. And I know what the D is from over here, see? The D is three fifths L. So if you take L and you subtract three fifths, you get two fifths. So therefore the V squared is gonna be the G times two fifths L. So therefore the velocity is the square root of two fifths GL. That's it. Very nice.